For the last couple of days, I've been out here on the farm spending time with some other awesome nightscape photographers. So I'm in between groups at the moment. So I thought I'd show you guys around and give you some background to some of the images you may have seen from this awesome place. I love being out in the wide open spaces of the great outdoors. This farm is a combination of beautiful crop filled paddocks with rolling hills in the background. The farm itself is very old and contains many relics from the past, especially as the owners seek to keep the original character and charm of the property. One thing I've learned in my travels is that you usually have to get off the beaten track to get the good stuff to photograph. A place like this is a hidden gem. Even though it's not that far from the closest town, you wouldn't even know it as you can't even see it from the road. Many of the old machines from times gone by are placed strategically around the farm and because of that it's a lot easier to get the best possible background sky compositions. There's so much here at the farm to shoot and as a nightscape photographer it's really good to not have to spend all your time searching around for great subjects but rather spend that time actually shooting. One of the things I enjoy most while spending time at the farm is the variety you can get in taking the same subject from different angles at different times of the year. When searching for subject matter for nightscape shots, I love to find interesting compositions in open spaces, even better if there's a clear horizon all around. So here we are at this beautiful old hay elevator. Now this used to live down closer to the creek down there and it was sort of hidden away. Probably about two years ago it was shifted here and for quite a while I didn't take a whole lot of images of this because I was a little bit concerned that it was not having a good background perspective. But more recently I've come back here and really appreciated the fact that I can get a nice wide open Milky Way core rising in the early season over in the southeast over here. So the key to getting this shot in that perspective is to get a nice low camera angle and those of you who follow my work you'd know that that's pretty much what I do for most of my shots. The reason being I want to make sure I get a lot of the sky in my shots and the other important part is to make sure that the subject matter is above that horizon line. Now that might sound very simple but it is sometimes very very difficult to do. Okay so I mentioned getting down low to the ground and I was just over there probably about four meters away from this shot. I was using a Nikon D750 and my Nikon 20 millimeter f1.8 lens and as you well know from my videos previously I love that lens and camera combination. The 20 millimeter lens I use it quite a lot because uh, it just brings me just that little bit closer to my subject matter and I think for the type of style that I like to do that's my go-to method. Um, it also compresses just that slight more amount the background sky and brings the Milky Way core a little bit closer but I had it mounted quite low to the ground probably only about uh, I don't know 600 millimeters from the ground and then I spent quite a bit of time walking around this object light painting it from different angles which I classify as my fine art light painting method. I've got quite a few videos uh, describing that method. I spent probably about 30 or 40 minutes just lighting the subject. Now you might think, gee, that's an awful long time to be spending lighting one subject, but that's what you have to do to get the shot and to go to that little extra bit of trouble to get the extra detail in the shot. Now this beautiful old Austin truck is certainly one of the favorite subjects to photograph out here on the farm. It's been here for about a year now. Um, when it first arrived, it was uh, about October. And at that time of the year, the Milky Way core is setting over in the southwestern sky here in the southern hemisphere. So the angle that we had to shoot was about where the camera's positioned there now, facing over that direction. Now this year, early in the season, when the Milky Way core was rising in the southeastern sky, I was able to reposition my tripod over on the other side of the truck and get this open sky in the background which is an absolutely awesome shot. The other benefit of that is that I can get the front of the truck in the shot and then I spent a fair bit of time light painting the vehicle from all the different angles. So to get this shot I set up the camera probably about four meters away from the front of the vehicle, made sure I had the camera down low as I've mentioned already for the reason being to get the, the horizon line down underneath the level of the truck cab. 
especially any trees that might be jutting up in the background. I want to try and alleviate that as much as I can so that I'm getting most of the night sky and I'm also getting a good angle on the truck. I've taken a background shot which is probably about an f 2.2 maybe 2.5 aperture to get a background shot then I've stopped down the aperture to about f4 to f5 and lowered the ISO down to about 500 to take the foreground shots. Why do I do that? Well I do that because I want to get the highest possible image quality. Now we all know that the lower the ISO the better quality the less noise you'll get out of your images. We also know that when we're shooting the open sky at night we can't shoot at ISO 500 or even 800 you've got to go pretty high. Sometimes I'd go at ISO 2500, sometimes 32, sometimes 64. Uh, it, it depends on the camera and equipment you have. But one thing is certain, you have to have a high ISO to capture that sky. But what is also very certain is to capture a foreground, if you have the intention of be, being able to blend foreground images into your shots, you can lower that ISO. And also, you can stop down the aperture. It makes a big difference to the quality. Well, I'll just have a look in here. This thing's full of spider webs, but gee, it's got character. And that's what we love about shooting nightscapes of this old machinery. It's got charm, character, it just takes you back there. Love it. Now here we are, another fantastic subject matter for nightscape images. This old international harvester was placed here oh, probably a couple of years ago now. And so I've shot this from a lot of different angles. The reason it's placed here is because it's a nice big wide open paddock. Remember I mentioned before about having an, enough uh, room around the outskirts of our images to get the sky in the background. So I've shot this both facing uh, southwest or in a westerly perspective and an easterly perspective and it works equally well both ways. Today as we're recording this we're in um, August of uh, 2018 and tonight I'm planning on perhaps shooting this with a southwesterly Milky Way core setting in the background. I know that's going to be a fantastic shot. And once again, I'll be using my light painting method to light the foreground subject and expose the night sky frame for the background. Now this is an awesome machine. It's quite large, which does make it really quite easy to, to put as a big prominent subject matter in the foreground. But it's got so much intricate detail with all these blades. It's got these um, belts and sprockets and pulleys, which I love. I love that stuff. There are occasions where um, I've shot this as a foreground for star trails. So when I've shot the star trails here, I've been facing in a southerly direction to get that in the southern hemisphere here, get that circular pattern in the sky. And it only really takes about 30 minutes or so to see that very pronounced circles in the star trails. Of course, you could shoot much longer than that, but uh, you just need more time, of course. Now there's machines like this on farms all around the countryside. Sometimes they're very hard to access and sometimes you don't even know that they're there. I spend a lot of time traveling around the countryside and when I come across a machine like this on a farm, which is private property, I always go and ask if I can get onto that land and take a picture of the shot. Very often these machines are easy to access once you know they're there, but it's a polite and courteous thing to do to ask the owner's permission first. I've never had a problem with that and they always uh, actually appreciate seeing the work that I've done with the image afterwards um, of their machine, which takes them back and it's quite reminiscing for them. Well, okay, out of all the brilliant subject matter on this farm, I would still say this is my favorite. This old comma truck body was uh, discovered here when I came out and I use it a lot for background shots for star trails and just for general uh, night photography. It's beautiful, you can see the different textures of paint and I don't know how many colors this thing's been painted over the years, but it's got plenty of different colors there. It's almost like a mosaic, but the positioning of this truck is probably, it's up on top of a rise and there's a really large expanse down towards the south. And you can see when you're facing down that way, there's a huge expanse of sky, which enables us to get those beautiful round star trails. Equally lovely is the fact that that beautiful gum tree behind is a lovely subject to light paint. So I tend to light that from behind to give the tree a back glow and it has that awesome look about it. Down further on the horizon, there's a little bit of glow from a, 
far away town, which just adds just that touch to the low part of the sky. So yes, this is certainly one of my favorite subjects. So I guess it just goes to show that you never give up. Hunt around the old junk piles, you just never know what you might find. And this is a good example of that. So as you're no doubt seeing from all of these subjects that I'm showing you, there's plenty of uh, beautiful stuff on this farm to shoot. And that's why we spend so much time out here. I haven't covered half of what's here. And there's so many other beautiful aspects here. In fact, you can just come out here and look at the fantastic open rolling paddocks here. At this time of year, they're as green as anything. They've got beautiful crops in them. The dam's got a little bit of water in it and sometimes it's high, sometimes it's low. There's a couple of windmills on this property. I haven't even mentioned those. And you know, it just does you so good to come out into the country, breathe the fresh air, listen to the birds sing, watch the kangaroos hop through the paddocks. It's just amazing. You know, one of the things that I love to do, as you well know, is to come out into the night and capture nightscape images. So this is where I spend a lot of my time doing exactly that. So once again, I really thank you for watching and I hope you got some useful information from this video. I'll be back soon with some more interesting nightscape subject matter for you. So I'll see you then.